Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. What you're about to see is me going over uh, benchmark results for the Vulcan beta of X-Plane 11, but I wanted to tack this video onto the beginning of that uh, to talk about a couple of things. First of all, if you've got a very complicated install of X-Plane, I don't recommend uh, just updating ever to one of the betas. Um, it's generally not a very good idea. What I'd recommend doing is keeping a copy, an extra copy. So you can go to your, you know, C drive and find your X-Plane 11. Like there's my X-Plane 11. I can right click and choose copy. And then I can go to like an external hard drive and paste it and make a backup of it. X-Plane is unique like that. Uh, most Windows software won't let you do that, but X-Plane will let you do that. So I'd recommend making a backup. Here you can see I have a Vulkan install and a regular old X-Plane install. The other thing um, you can do if you just want to play around with Vulkan and uh, you don't want to mess up your, your main install, instead of making a copy of it, maybe it's too big, you can install a second copy of X-Plane. So again, what you do is browse to your C drive wherever you've got X-Plane, and in your main X-Plane folder, you'll see the X-Plane installer. You run that, and there's a choice in there to install a second copy of X-Plane. It's the last selection down there at the bottom. Um, and then you can pick a different spot on your hard drive, install a clean copy of X-Plane, just pick a small section of the world, uh, to play around with uh, Vulcan. And then once you've done that, then if you want to do the update to Vulcan, uh, most likely, or 1150 beta, um, most likely they're going to have that uh, built into the installer. And so you would choose Update X-Plane right here. You're not going to get prompted for 1150 to update until 1150 is final. So if you want to update to the 1150 beta, um, then this is where you would click update explain and then you check this little box right here that says check for new betas as well as updates that little check box down there at the bottom otherwise it's just gonna scan through and it's just gonna put you on the latest version which at the time of this video is 1141 again if you want the beta you gotta check the little box there that should be the way that they end up distributing this uh, this beta alright um, I think that's all I wanted to say. Okay, so I thought of the other thing I wanted to show you. What did I fly when I benchmarked it? So, as I mentioned earlier, I did a flight over Manhattan, um, and what I did is I'd made a recording uh, of a flight that I could play back, and then I used a separate piece of software to capture the average frame rate during that flight. Now, this flight is about a minute and a half long, but um, I only captured the first 60 seconds of it. And I guess I could have been playing it here all along. Uh, yeah, we don't need that sound. Uh, so we'll get rid of that. Um, but basically it's just, you know, right over Manhattan, clear weather, lots and lots of buildings. And uh, I did a three nautical mile approach to LaGuardia, immediately banked left to head towards Manhattan and then flew straight towards it. And again, as I mentioned, I captured the, the first 60 seconds I averaged the frame rate uh, using a third party tool to do that. And so there you go, there is Manhattan. And basically I fly a relatively straight line for the next minute or so, capturing uh, that average frame rate all along. So that's how that was done. Hey, Michael with X-Force PC, doing a little different style video here um, where we're going to use my computer and my webcam. It's kind of a bad webcam. Austin has my good webcam. He's doing some stuff. Look for that on his channel. But we'll talk about Austin's content at some point in the future. You're here to talk, hear about Vulkan. So I did a bunch of testing on Vulkan, the uh, private beta I've been running for a while and I uh, want to go over the results. I used an i9 processor across the board for this particular video. I'll come out with some stuff for Ryzen in the near future. But Vulkan's a graphics API, so it's largely about the graphics. So what I wanted to do was eliminate any CPU bottlenecks there might be 
and I used an i9 because it's the fastest processor for running X-Plane. Not dramatically faster, but it is the fastest. And so any bottlenecks for CPU are minimized by using that. Now I used three quality settings in X-Plane across my testing, and you'll see those referred to as low, medium, and high. This, can, this is considered low. Now, I know for some people this wouldn't be considered low. These, a lot of these things are turned up kind of high, actually. But um, this is what I considered low. I've got the anti-aliasing turned down pretty far. And the stuff over here on the left is where you see anti-aliasing. is uh, That does tend to hit the graphics card the most, um, as well as the number of objects, which I have set to medium. Now, when we go to what I consider, uh, so we have low, then medium. This is considered medium in my benchmarks. And, you know, you can jump back here if you need to reference this again. But you can see I went up on the anti-aliasing a notch. We have our texture quality now set to maximum, and our objects are now set to high. But this is considered medium in my benchmarking. And then we have the high quality test. I upped the anti-aliasing one notch on this, and the objects, number of objects, I went to maximum on those. Um, beyond that, um, that's all the changes. Now let's get into the benchmarks. Now what I did is I tested a single 1080p, I ch tested a triple 1080p, meaning three 1080p displays. I tested a single 4K display, and I did almost all those on low, medium, and high. I didn't bother doing a 4K low because that didn't really make sense. Why would you run it at 4K and then turn the settings all the way down to low? Um, so let's get into that now. Um, so this is our 1080p low results, a single 1080p display. And you see here our Vulcan frame rate is in uh, red and the OpenGL is in blue. And you'll note here that the um, AMD cards, the Vega 56, the Radeon 7, and the RX 5700, all almost doubled their frame rate. And whereas you'll notice on the NVIDIA, um, there's really, you know, about a 20% um, increase in performance. And you're going to see that theme repeat itself quite a bit. Um, you'll also notice that uh, there wasn't much variance between the NVIDIA because really um, on low the graphics are not much of a bottleneck so uh, and really it's the, all about the CPU on this particular one. <clears throat> now we go to 1080p medium settings here and you see by the way the frame rate is, ac is across the bottom here. Again you see that we're in the upper 30s to 40 on AMD in um, OpenGL and then when we go to Vulkan we're almost up to 80 so again almost doubling the performance whereas the NVIDIA we're looking at about a 25 percent increase here in performance uh, still the NVIDIA is uh, faster than the AMD but the but the advantage that AMD has here um, has been or excuse me, the disadvantage that AMD has has been greatly reduced. You're, we're seeing much larger gains in AMD because AMD had the most um, ground to gain. Because if you look at the OpenGL performance, it's pretty atrocious. Let's move on. 1080p high. So again, this is a single 1080p display, um, but with the high settings. Um, again, AMD, we're seeing here, this is starting to get a little unplayable. We're under 30 frames per second on AMD on OpenGL. And I really like to stay over 30 for myself. I try to keep customers over 30. But you can see on a, even on a single 1080p display with high settings, we're falling below that on all the, the AMD cards. Uh, the Vega 56, Radeon 7, and the 57, RX 5700. But... When we go to Vulcan, that shoots almost all the way up to 60, and most people's monitors only do 60 hertz. Um, so anything over 60 for a lot of people is just wasted frame rate anyway. So if you've got a Vega 56, Radeon 7, or Radeon, an RX 5700, um, you are probably going to be pretty happy, uh, especially if you've got a single 1080p display. Again, with... Uh, 
with the uh, NVIDIA stuff, we're seeing, you know, 20, 25%, something like that. So, 3 by 1080p. So, you're running three 1080p displays here, three individual windows of X-Plane. We're not using NVIDIA Surround. We're not using, uh, what, do you, what is it? Uh, AMD calls it uh, iFinity, at least they used to. Um, so here, again, we're seeing a huge jump. So on um, AMD, we're under 20. We're at like 18, and then we're up to about 38 to 35. So we're doubling the frame rate here. This is where we're seeing a doubling of the frame rate with AMD. We're going from unplayable, under tw anything under 20 frames per second, your system is running in slow motion. Um, the, the flight model will slow down under 20 frames per second. But here, when we run Vulcan, we're in the mid to upper 30s, which is pretty good. With NVIDIA, we're also seeing nice gains, more gains than we'd seen before. This is about a 50% increase for NVIDIA, as, and then AMD, again, about a 100% increase or doubling. Now we're going to go to a single 4K display. So that's the, what is it, 3840 by 2160. It's a lot of pixels. It's actually more pixels than triple 1080 is. And here we are seeing the, um, the AMD pretty much double itself again. Now one anomaly we see is the GTX 1660 Super really fell off in this test. Um, it fell way down, and it didn't get any benefit going to Vulcan, if you look at the 1660 Super. And what I found on that is it was running out of video memory at 4K. We were actually having to, to go into system memory, and so it was using, I think, about 2 gigs of system memory. System memory is DDR4, video card memory is DDR6, so that memory is a lot slower, and that's why we saw... A very low score from the GTX 1660 Super, and we saw no benefit going to Vulcan. And, by the way, if you've got a GTX 1660 Super, you really shouldn't be pairing that with a 4K display. Those two things really don't go together. Um, moving on, a single 4K display with the high settings. Here, again, we saw, uh, let's see, really good gains on AMD. Not quite doubling, but nice gains. Uh, going from unplayable to playable, we're staying 25 frames per second and higher, just barely. Um, again, about a 25 or 30 percent boost on the NVIDIA side. And again, that GTX 1660 Super saw no gains because of the same thing with video memory, running out of video memory. All right, so here, based on all of what we just saw, here are the estimated percent gains in frames per second for AMD and NVIDIA. So if you have a Vega 56, a Radeon 7, an RX 5700, you should expect all, somewhere around a 100% frame rate gain. Now, you could have a unique scenario where you don't see that. But the average person should see almost a 100% gain. In other words, a doubling of the frame rate. Whereas if you're running one of the green team, the, the GTX from NVIDIA, you're probably going to see somewhere between 20 and 30% more frames per second. Again, depending on your scenario. Now, I took processor out of the equation as much as possible by running an i9 chip. Now, if you've got some dog slow chip, maybe you don't see these types of gains because your processor is the bottleneck. And, you know... Maybe that when you run the uh, Vulcan version and you, if you don't see any gains, maybe that points you at your processor and says, well, I need a little faster processor. But um, these are the expected gains, and it's quite remarkable. Now, I'll make a few notations here. I did this in clear weather. I did it over New York City. Um, I did it... Um, I didn't run any third-party stuff. I didn't run X-Enviro, SkyMax, you know, all that stuff. But I did run it over Manhattan, New York City, and uh, actually I think I'm going to go tack on to the beginning of this video the actual flight I took so you can see. But it's a lot of buildings. 
It is during the daytime. It is in clear weather, but it's a lot of objects, a lot of buildings. So um, I'm going to I'm going to tack a couple things onto the beginning of this video, actually. So um, you'll you'll have already seen those by the time you get to this.